Today is a very important day for Sierra Leone. We have <laughs> civil war in my country is at an end. And we have all resolved that never again shall we resort to violence to settle matters of political importance. The armed struggle which we started on the 23rd March 1991 has been painful for all of us. For too long we had lived in Sierra Leone in which a few corrupt people held the majority to ransom. Because of this, violence erupted in society. And because of this violence, there have been victims. People have died. Others have suffered injuries. This historic document which we're about to sign should be dedicated to the children of Sierra Leone. Sign it as President of Sierra Leone. More importantly, I shall sign it not for myself, but for Memuna Mansere, who is here today representing thousands of her sisters and brothers, the children of Sierra Leone, the most vulnerable victims of the war. Where is Memuna Mansare based? that you have seen her. Please, if she can come up. You see, Hello. this is a child. She is going to grow up without her right hand. This is the product of war. So I hope we shall all learn from this and try to embrace peace wherever we are. Thank you very much. On July 7, 1999, in Lomé, Togo, the president of Sierra Leone and the leader of the rebel forces signed a peace accord. These accords are intended to end the civil war, which had been devastating the country for the last 10 years. However, the only news we hear about this civil war on our television screens and in the newspapers is about the widespread amputation of civilians' limbs. <laughs> It was the 18th, three days when we ran away from these people. They went to our street where we live, started killing. I ran away with my children, eight of them. Three days later, the 18th January, my children said, Father, today we want to eat, we want to go and fetch water. I told them, no, don't go out. I'm going out to fetch water. Unfortunately, I met with them. I was coming by this way. I don't know that they were at this side. They halted me with guns. They killed it in front of me. I only alone stand now like this, dumb. They put a gun here, a gun here, a gun in my back. Commanded me to put my hand down or they explode me off. I've already seen what have happened. So they commanded me. They amputated my hand. Even I got to save one 
with my one hand. I took him by my one hand and started running with him. So it's a great problem here in our country. We are running, coming for town. Others we are searching for food when they go to all of us. When we had that, we left the boats coming for town. We fell into their ambush. They captured us. We are full number, assembled seven of us. Six were killed. They called me. I lie down. They tied both my arms and my feet. They hung me. There they did what they feel like doing. Beating me with their guns, throwing stones on me. At about 1640, they came use the matchet to cut the rope they, which I was tied. We went down. That man, I placed my left hand. He said, no, I know you are a student. He got to, he sat in my pocket, took my scout ID card, took my school ID card, national identity card, and my school testimony, which I collected. It was with me. Then he burnt it first. He chopped my arm and said, today you wash your arm from politics. We are UFSL, that is Revolutionary United Front of Sierra Leone, took off arms against a corrupt political system by then headed by former President Joseph Saidu Momo in 1991. But our leader, Corporal Fode Sebana Sanko, started organizing IRF as far back as in the 80s, early 80s. I think it has to do with a collapse of the state. Because for three decades, we had on democratic states, we have a massive corruption, mismanagement. And even though Sierra Leone, by virtue of the resources we have, is supposed to be one of the richest countries in the world. But through so many years of mismanagement, we lost that. And obviously, the poverty increases. We had a high rate of poverty. Over 70% of the population was very poor. We are living on wild fruits. Wild fruits. Uh, the little income got from the firewood that they were selling. Just imagine one bundle for 50 leons in our own currency, which cannot even earn you a cup of rice. À cause de la pauvreté, parce que disons il n'y a pas une moyenne classe en Sierra Leone. Il y a les pauvres carrément qui n'ont pas à manger. Il y a les riches qui sont bien aisés, des belles maisons, des belles voitures et tout ça, et des gens qui n'ont même pas le prix d'un sac de riz. À de week six o'clock. Why don't we come on there? Are they pray after? Don't pray down. I go for go buy market snack in Jimmy. We they buy eight thousand for kitchen. When we don't sell and done, we gain two thousand dollars every day. Uh, a lot of events, conflict of events, societal ills, marginalizing of the youth, social problems, compel us. To organize ourselves to make sure that we are, we fight the APC, that is the All People Congress Party, the one party dictatorship that was established in the country in 1978 by the Lesaka Stevie, to get them out of power so that we have real democracy, a participatory democracy, democracy that will ensure that we get education. Equal, equal opportunity to get jobs in this country. We live like a normal human being. We need a democracy that would elevate us from our degradation to the point where we live with the Committee of Nations. The roof, like other movements, began as a protest movement. It goes back in terms of its ideology to the 80s. The hostility started in 91. It's usually the date that most people use with an attack on Kailahun. Part of it was a desire to see the wealth more equitably spread among the people, to see more of the, the uh, 
benefits of the natural resources go to the people themselves or to the country. Um, although it's not a, a very large country, it's about the size of um, United Ireland, it has a relatively small population, only about 4.5 million. Uh, until the troubles closed off a lot of areas and prevented the farmers from working, uh, Sierra Leone was not only capable of feeding itself, but was a major exporter of rice and, and other produce as well. to I think but it was known as the Athens of Africa um, just to, to sort of very briefly run through um, it has diamond wealth it has gold bauxite iron ore we produce this mineral to them then they got a lot of money why we own the land we don't have nothing can produce a lot of diamonds. Even today, even I don't even have a bicycle to ride. You understand? Why they are in the towns? Because they have their money, then they have all top cars, you know, nice house to sleep, nice clothes to wear, eat good food. With a boku of we we don't we don't know that they bought we own right, then they take concern and our other country. We're not a big one that we didn't do before. The potential to make money here legitimately is enormous. The biggest American economic interest was originally the Sierra Rutile Company. Well, when the diamond trade was, in fact, prosperous, the Bears was in charge. Il y a eu des, des, des accords de, de, de mining qui ont été prévus entre les deux grosses sociétés de mining qui étaient présentes sur la place, Sierra Routile pour le Routile et Siromco, le groupe Alu Suisse, euh, pour la bauxite. Industrie, il y a des Libanais, il y a aussi des sociétés anglaises comme l'usine de la bière, Star Beer qui est fermée, euh, le tabac, euh, 555 aussi s'est fermé à cause de la guerre. Ça a été pillé, ils ont cassé tout, toutes les machines, ils ont, enfin, ils ont brûlé même la moitié de, de, de l'usine, du bâtiment carrément. We will not allow any exploitation of Sierra natural resources by any foreigner. We, what we are talking about now is key partnership. Foreigners, because we are living in a global community. We, we want investors. Investors that will look at our nation not to exploit our nation for their own personal aggrandizement. But we want an investment that is turnkey partnership. That kind of people we are looking at. Not people to siphon the resources here so that they can build mansion or cash for the same in Paris, in London, like, 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 like pre-colonial economy. I mean, colonial economy. No, no, no. In July 1991, the rebels of the roof are in control of one-fifth of the country. They terrorize civilians, accusing them of supporting a government that exploits them. Their motto is, no more slaves, no more masters. Power and wealth to the people. <laughs> We start to fight the rebels when the rebels enter in Sierra Leone. We start to fight the rebels. After fighting the rebels, and uh, then uh, they, they sent for the peacekeeping force, which is the Nigerians. They came here as a peacekeeping force. So we joined together to fight the rebels. 
The Nigerian intervention, which began in 1993, was part of an economic strategy. The future of Nigeria as a regional industrial power relies on its ability to tie its oil, gas, and hydroelectrical power to Sierra Leone's minerals. Nigeria also has important political, commercial, and private interests in Sierra Leone, specifically in iron and diamonds. Now, the problem was compounded by the army, the Sierra Leone army. Um, in 1992, the army staged a coup against the ruling party, then the APC, which was this very corrupt government that everybody knew was corrupt. Um, they staged a coup. Young officers, lieutenants, second lieutenants, the most senior was a captain and they took over government. Now, th their taking over government had a major effect on the army, which had been fighting this war against the rebels since 91, but not being well provided for. That was the excuse for staging the coup. If soldiers were referred to as sobels, that was the street uh, parlance to say soldiers have turned themselves into rebels. And that was why they were called sobels. Le fait le plus caractéristique, c'est que ce, ce phénomène de dimixion entre, entre la rébellion et l'armée en fait, pose un problème de plus en plus sérieux et on voit apparaître côté gouvernemental des, des forces parallèles, notamment ces milices de défense civile de Camajo dans le sud du pays. Ouais. The deterioration of conditions within the army encourages the soldiers to defect and join the rebels. In March 1995, in order to deal with this alliance and to stop the advance of the roof, the Kamajors organized themselves into a pro-government militia led by Hinga Norman. They make an alliance with the Nigerians who provide training and logistical support. The Kamajors brutally spread the war throughout the country. The war started at Kono, from Kono now. I came back I, to Sawafe. From Sawafe, they are killed, my husband, my two children. Then I come back to Burma. From Burma, I got sick. Then I come back here. From here now, my other daughter that I brought here died. I ran away with my, with my family of 10. So we have to pass through bushes. They have money to sleep at night. Mosquitoes are biting us. No food, no better shelter. We have to suffer the lot. October 1995, the Roof troops are now in control of one third of the country. The government is completely overwhelmed and relies more than ever on the 2,000 Nigerians based in Sierra Leone. In order to support them, the government hires the South African mercenaries of Executive Outcomes, a company that specializes in commando operations. The mercenaries are paid with diamond mine concessions. <laughs> January 1996. Due to the total inefficiency of the government and the degradation of the country, Corporal General Julius Mada Bio seizes power in a coup d'etat. He is convinced of the benefit in sharing the power with the roof. During the Abidjan negotiations, Madabio obtained a ceasefire and an agreement with Fide Sanko to end the hostilities. 
The international community adamantly opposes the partnership with the roof, since the roof's politics are opposed to the interests of the Western world. Therefore, they impose an electoral process. The installation of an Occidental-style government is essential to the international community. It has been, I think, the role of the international community to push at all costs for democracy. Parce qu'on a ce concept en, en Occident qu'il faut imposer la démocratie partout, même dans les circonstances où manifestement elle ne serait pas viable. Well, again, I was uh, very fortunate because I was acting out of my involvement in the UN. Uh, you know, the United Nations uh, almost uh, a decade ago uh, got, went into this issue of democratization. It was very new for the UN because the UN should not involve itself in the domestic affairs of member states. But there was a feeling that unless you democratize, it's not going to uh, improve things. So I was the first uh, focal point in the UN system for democratization. The country was in a turmoil uh, at that time. You know, we, we, our position was that um, uh, peace before election of which uh, uh, the international community kicked against that, you see, including the government, you know, uh, of Sierra Leone. You see, they kicked against that. They went ahead, actually, with the election. But we, the roof, we vehemently opposed the idea of uh, uh, going into election, why peace has not yet restored in the country. That was our position. And that made us even not to participate in the election, which they call upon us. It is true that the amputations began at that time, at least evidently. We don't know what was happening behind the, the, the lines. Because our slogan in the election commission was, the future is in your hands. And when they defined the, the roof, they began to cut hands. That was the first time we know. Despite the extreme violence, which follows the announcement of the elections, an electoral commission is put in place by the UN. The committee is presided over by James Jonah, the Secretary of the United Nations Political Affairs. The international community chooses Ahmad Tejan Kaba, a former UN executive, as its candidate. The presence of fighters everywhere, widespread insecurity, and the increasing number of Sierra Leonean refugees living in camps makes the election a parody of democracy. The British paid eight and a half million pounds for the electoral process. So President Kaba was a byproduct of that process. Comme on explique l'intervention française pour les élections du président Conté. Ancienne colonie, euh, lien euh, euh, important, je dirais, entre les, entre les deux pays, euh, le fait que la Sierra Leone soit membre du Commonwealth. Euh, je pense que c'est pas que en Sierra Leone, je pense que la France a a bien supporté le président Conté euh, lors des dernières élections qu'il a gagné aussi démocratiquement. Euh, je pense que les, les anciennes puissances entre guillemets coloniales euh, continuent à, à subventionner euh, euh, dans leurs anciennes colonies les, les candidats qu'elles trouvent euh, potentiellement les, les, les meilleurs entre guillemets. Encore une fois, ça c'est des décisions politiques à très haut niveau. Euh, pour euh, la démocratie dans la sous-région. Je pense que c'est une des raisons pour laquelle euh, le Royaume-Uni a supporté le, le, le président Kaba. Je should first of all like to uh, begin by saying that when I agreed to submit my candidature for the presidency of Sierra Leone, my uh, message to the people was that I was uh, going to work relentlessly for peace, security, and stability in Sierra Leone. March 15, 1996, Ahmad Tejan Kaba wins the election. Although the elections are held under the control of the United Nations, John Carafuth Smart and 13 other parties protest major election fraud. Independent analysis of the polling results proves that James Jonah, the UN representative, 
manipulated the results in favor of Kabah. In one-third of the 12 districts, the number of votes was greater than the number of registered voters. Although the Constitution calls for a cancellation of the election in these circumstances, James Jonah subtracts the overage of votes and then certifies the election. <laughs> I think a lot of the players under the APC are still under this government. So it's, it's like you're changing the driver, the vehicle is still the same. So what we are saying is that the vehicle has to go to the garage. You have to service the vehicle. You change a lot of things in the, within the vehicle because the driver will not change the sound of the vehicle alone. So it means you have to overhaul the entire system. That is, and that is the reason why I believe that President Kaba has not made a, much of a success because there are still people within the system. He's still working within the old system. What we need is to change the entire system. Most of those that are taking part now in Australian politics work with United Nations. Dr. James Jonah was the undersecretary for political affairs, if I'm not mistaken, at UN. He lived in New York for quite a long time. Dr. Ahmed Yankaba, the, the president, president of Sierra Leone, worked with the United Nations for more than 15 years. He lived in New York for the rest of his adulthood, only to come to Sierra Leone to partake in an election that was conducted by James Juna as the chairman for the INEC election and according to the provision of um, uh, Abidjan Peace Accord, he was not supposed to take part in any political appointment. But he was paid by becoming finance minister, the first uh, ambassador, UN ambassador, I mean, sorry, not ambassador of the United Nations, later finance minister, which is a contravention, I mean, a uh, violation of the 1991 constitution and even the INEC laws. What did I do? I started off by working on a strategy for the eradication of poverty in Sierra Leone. I figured out that uh, the revenue situation of the country was such that we depended, we depended largely on foreign aid. 60% uh, of our budget was financed by, from foreign aid. And, uh, then, based on that situation, and the fact that there was very, very, very high level of uh, unemployment in the country, is that the only way we could make it would be to create an atmosphere that will encourage the flourishing of, uh, of the private sector. And in this regard, I embarked on a series of uh, of uh, activities uh, with this in mind. And I must say that we were successful in getting, for example, I, in my first speech to Parliament, I said, uh, set out that uh, we should have a bridge crossing from Lunge to Freetown. We must have uh, uh, the Peninsula Road completed and done. Uh, we, uh, the transportation system, uh, we needed a more efficient and uh, secure, safe transportation system for, to move things around in the country. Meanwhile, the civil war, stoked by the electoral process, results in even more civilian casualties. Teenagers and children are forced to join one of the military factions, including the government's militia, malnutrition, and mounting diseases provoke the worst humanitarian crisis the country has ever seen. Uh, economically, we are still dependent on, on Britain. That is why, I mean, when, when we had our problems, we had to go to them and they had to come in and see how they could sort our military, our human uh, crisis, our various other things out. In order to make sure, or to try and ensure that the army doesn't rebel again, uh, we are 
assisting the government of Sierra Leone to establish a civilian Ministry of Defence with the sort of checks and controls that we would have uh, back in Europe. The second area is the police. And there is a Commonwealth team presently in Sierra Leone funded by the British, which is helping to put together uh, a professional police force. And on top of that, we are going to have an inspector general. The head of the police is going to be British. Um, we're a major contributor to the disarmament and demobilization and reintegration program, um, which is, whose role it is, is to, to get the guns from these fighters uh, and take them through the various stages necessary to re-establish them in civilian life. Have you achieved in bringing peace? Into, I mean, I mean, to Sierra Leone? No. No. In fact, they, they brought more chaos into the country. The, um, the, the death rate has increased. Malnutrition, anarchy. The hard line taken by President Kaba unleashes extreme violence between the different factions warring across the country. The Kamajors attack the roof soldiers, beheading them. The roof soldiers amputate the limbs of Kamajors in retaliation. Kaba is forced into this approach by Great Britain's ambassador, Peter Penfold, and the UN ambassador, Francis O'Kalo. February 1997, Despite signing the peace agreement, Fude Sanko is arrested and jailed with other roof leaders and army officers. This is a political maneuver by President Gabar and his ally to ignore the peace agreement, break the roof rebellion, and the resistance of the Sierra Leone army. The results will be completely different. Instead, it provokes an escalation of violence, forcing even more civilians to seek safety in refugee camps. We had a rebel attack at Shebuema, and uh, from there we withdrew to RTI camp. So we are at RTI camp for, I was there with my own family for nearly two weeks. And again, we had another rebel attack at uh, Hangar. Fortunately, they evacuated us from Kenima to Blama camp here. That day, or within that week, you see people from Blama almost two miles to Kenning. People were sleeping along the road. Very, very, under very, very miserable conditions. Our problem in this country is that we have too many De Beers interested in our mineral resources who stirred up this war. When I saw that people were playing with our country, I called upon the roof in the name of peace, says Major Johnny Paul Caroma. He is released from Pademba Road Central Prison on May 25th, 1997, with hundreds of other prisoners following the coup d'etat led by the Sierra Leone Army. The soldiers opened the rice warehouses, which belonged to private companies and humanitarian organizations, and let the people help themselves. Karoma secures Fude Sanko's liberation and names him second in command of the government of a unified AFRC roof. Moi, j'ai perdu un million deux cent mille pendant le pillage. J'ai perdu trois mille tonnes de, de, de riz. Ils sont partis soixante mille sacs sur les têtes, surtout. After the AFRC overthrew President Kaba, uh, don't they decide? They decide to they decide to call the, the the enemy from the bush to stop this fight. Let us make peace. That the government, AFRC government, they decide to call the rebels. They call for ceasefire and so and so. They decide to call the rebels then to come to town. So the fight, will, the war, the war should be over. So after this. They call the rebels in, in the camp, in town, in the city. They spread all over, they make one government. In many other third world countries, the international community tolerates and participates in military coup d'etat. However, it categorically refuses the coup of the AFRC and the roof. 
ECOWAS, the West African States Organization, and the international community decides to reinforce the presence of Nigerian troops in the country by incorporating them into the original intervention force ECOMOG. ECOMOG is an armed wing, it's a military wing of ECOWAS, Economic Community of West Africa. It is not a standing force, but it is a force that could be raised from the contributing countries to contain any military situation in the West African sub-region. We had wanted Akia you know, to come Akia, you know, and to bring peace for the people of Sierra Leone. But um, that again, the international community never allowed you know, the major you see, between we and the National Army. The international community cannot afford to acquiesce in the arbitrary and unconstitutional overthrow of a democratic government. And the people of Sierra Leone have the right to expect their constitution, the rule of law, and the results of free and fair elections to be respected. What you have today in Sierra Leone is a matter of principle. A very serious principle where a government was elected by the people under the rule of law. And we very much hope that the Security Council will not allow them to not only frustrate the will of the people of Sierra Leone, but defy the world community. The UN votes in Resolution 1132 on October 8, 1997. This resolution prevents the trading of arms and oil with Sierra Leone. The implementation of these sanctions is left to ECOWAS. The ECOMOG forces impose a naval and road blockade across the country. They bombard all ships transporting food, which in turn kills many civilians. Et c'est ainsi qu'on a vu des, des décisions au niveau de, de la CDAO ou même du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies vis-à-vis -vis de l'embargo, par exemple, qui a, qui, a, qui a frappé la Sierra Leone en 1997, où on a laissé s'instaurer un embargo euh, originellement filtrant, c'est-à-dire euh, exemptant. Euh, l'aide humanitaire, mais qui, dans les faits, a été un embargo total, sans qu'il n'y ait, qu ait d'émotion ou que ce soit, malgré les, malgré les protestations des organisations humanitaires, malgré euh, des, les réactions de certaines agences des Nations Unies. The resolution before the Council today provides practical backing for ECOWAS. By establishing an international arms and oil embargo and visa restrictions on members of the junta, the Security Council will be making clear to the illegal regime in Freetown that the entire international community is committed to reversing the military coup and restoring the democratically elected it government. It does not limit shipments of food or medicines or other basic necessities. It contains provisions for regular review of the implementation and impact of the sanctions. The sanctions are designed to have maximum impact against the illegal junta of Sierra Leone while imposing a minimum burden on the civilian population. Indeed, I think that the only thing that did not go through was humanitarian aid. Um, there was obvious signs of commercial food and commercial fuel coming into the country. But um, humanitarian aid came in. It did come in. There were some medicines that came in and uh, some small items for nutritional programs but the big items did not come into the country and behind that was indeed international politics i'm quite convinced of it il y avait aussi un enjeu politique qui était l'approvisionnement de la du pays en nourriture et faire sentir à la population sierra leonaise que euh, la junte militaire ça signifiait avoir faim ça signifiait ne pas manger à sa faim et que il faudrait attendre le retour du président Kaba pour manger à sa faim. Je dirais de mai 97 à février 98, la Sierra Leone était coupée du monde. Je veux dire, il y avait euh, bon quelques quelques bateaux euh, qui sont venus euh, au tout début, puis après ils ont plus pu venir parce qu'il y avait un, un blocus ma, euh, maritime. <coughs> il y avait un blocus routier euh, plus ou moins efficace, ce qui fait que la population est pas morte de faim, mais Ils ont eu faim en 97, définitivement. Over 200,000 people leave Freetown. 
The price of food increased astronomically, and many families can only afford one meal per day. They cannot even count on humanitarian aid, which no longer reaches Freetown as ordered by President Kaba and the UK ambassador Peter Penfold. Rice is now used as a weapon of war. The UN Security Council is aware of the embargo on food imports and humanitarian aid, but remains silent on these illegal actions. Pressured by the international community, the negotiations held between the Junta and ECOWAS result in a treaty on October 23, 1997. The treaty states that Coroma must transfer power to civilians within the next six months. <laughs> Apart from ECOMOG, we have our civil defense units who were fighting very hard in the south and the east and they needed weapons. So when we did these negotiations, we were not looking for mercenaries to come in to fight. We were looking for the weapons to come to give to our civil defense. President Kaba, in exile in Conakry, negotiates with a Thai banker. The banker will finance the counter coup d'etat for up to $10 million in exchange for Sierra Leone's diamond mine concessions, estimated at $150 million. On the suggestion of UK Ambassador Peter Penfold, mercenaries from Sandline, a sister company of Executive Outcomes, are put in charge of the operation. Meetings between Sandline and Kaba's government are conducted in the Commonwealth offices. So, when ECOMOG came in, ECOMOG had the RUF and the AFRC the former SLS soldiers, who had then taken over power from, the pre from President Tejan Kaba and invited RUF to join them. When ECOMOG chased them out, they now formed a united front against the government of Sierra Leone, and they equally became a united enemy of ECOMOG. February 1998, with the help of Sandline mercenaries, the ECOMOG forces launch an offensive to take back Freetown. Before this offensive, Sandline sent detailed reports describing their planned military operations and the nature of the weapons that were to be delivered, in spite of the embargo to British, American, Commonwealth, and UN officials. The UN, when questioned on this subject, answered that the embargo was not violated. However, two months later, Resolution 1171, dated June 5, 1998, is passed. It specifies that the weapons embargo in Sierra Leone only applies to non-governmental forces, although it originally applied to all factions. <laughs> Who gave the orders? Who gave the orders? Who gave the orders for, for Alpha J to move from Lungi to go drop bomb in villages? Who gave that order? What, I want to know that. 
The other came from who? So Nabacha of Nigeria, or, or General Malou, or President Kaba. Since it was the 5th of May this year, Sijan Kaba has been advocating for the use of military violence for his return to power without any consideration for the loss of life and property. They kill the people now, they say how they support Nigeria, man. Them, me they talk to all students of Fobe College, as me as students of Fobe College, they who not want Nigerians, they who not want Tijan Kaba, the peace we want. Nigeria Alpha Jets dropped numerous cluster bombs forbidden by international law on the Kailahun district. The cities of Kailahun, Koidu, and Pendembu are transformed into ghost towns. The same bombs are also dropped on peasant villages in the region said to shelter rebels. Looking at the devastation caused by them, Britain brought letter weapons in this country. The frigate, British frigate, came on the sea here. They, they, in fact, they, they, the proliferation of, of, of firearms and missile alone have been feared by them. Sand line uh, 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 issue happened in Commonwealth office in London. I mean, yeah, it's, it's documented. Painful. They honor by it and they, I mean, they close their mouth only to come back later, you know, I mean, uh, give you, uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, uh, I, 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 I mean, a different picture. Bring uh, relief food. We're not, we're not here for that. But in the meantime, we're also trying to get some more food in. And um, there's a ship with 1,800 tons of rice um, donated by the Italian government. Um, and that is, should be on its way here now. Um, but we were having to wait until we had sort of uh, shores of Smegamo and Ancient North at the port. Again, of course, the government had to. Uh, demonstrate that you could not do that type of thing, uh, overthrowing a government, a legitimate government, is a treasonable offense. And so there are treason trials, lots of them, people got condemned to death. One group of uh, soldiers were executed um, by firing squad when they were found guilty of treason and so on. On October 19, 1998, by the order of President Kabar, 24 army officers are executed by a firing squad composed of Ekomag soldiers. Fude Sanko is handed over to Sierra Leonese authorities, where he is condemned to death by a court presided over by a Nigerian judge. He is not represented by a lawyer, and his requests for witnesses are refused. Twenty-eight other civilians are also condemned to death. Appeals are not allowed. We spent about seven to eight months in the demobilization camp in Adlungi. From Lungi, they, they took us to Paremba Road. Paremba Road prison. Uh, they decided to kill all of us. They decided to kill all of us. Look at the swimming pool at the uh, 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 stadium. stadium. They killed most of our brothers in there. Sadly, there are still um, elements within Syrian society who are choosing to fight for whatever reason they may think it's they want to do so. Um, there are elements outside of the country who are sort of inflaming the, um, this issue. These have to be addressed. If we're going to have long-term peace and developments and the success of democracy. He wrote le, the, the Security Council said 11, uh, uh, resolution, 11.32, I'm going to tell you something. 11.32, I'm um, um, embargo on Sierra Leone. Just February, they reverse it, bring light weapons to fear the crisis. The same security council say, okay, that that arm about 1132, 1132 should be should be uplifted. They start bringing arm, and where the arm went to the wrong people. Britain, Britain, Britain start bringing ship here, bringing British uh, soldiers to, to to clean wells for people. Let them go to the country start to clean well. And they actually mean to bring peace here, you know. But not just a uh, window dressing, a uh, peace, you know. They did it. Confirm they're all responsible. 11.32, why is it that they lifted arm and bag on Sierra very fast and up to now arm and bag is still on, 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 on Liberia? Why? A, a country coming for war, you know? Very hastily. Yes? They say arm and bag is, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's lifted. They start bringing arms, weapons, 
start training very fast, training people then to fight us again. Uh, in January, the rebels succeeded in, uh, in coming into Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone. It is very bad for the military to accept a situation like that. But the circumstances which they came into Freetown were unorthodox. They were revolutionary in nature. They used human shield. They used children, pregnant women, and refugees to cover their advance into Freetown up till the moment they opened fire on us in Freetown. It was extremely difficult to react in a decisive military manner in circumstances of this nature. So they were allowed to come in and perpetrate their mayhem before they were eventually chased out. But very honestly, within two weeks, they were chased out of Freetown completely. December 1998. The rebels and the junta have united as the people's army and are entering Freetown. Karoma says, the goal is to free our men in prison and to make Kaba and his allies understand that refusing to negotiate is not a good solution. So it's just because uh, our colleagues them from the bush come and liberate us from Baden Road. We should have died. You see, that is why we say thanks to our brothers then who came and liberated us from Padema Road. The death sentence of Fude Sanko and the execution of 24 officers in Rage Roof and AFRC soldiers. They attack civilians affiliated with the government, beheading, amputating, or burning them alive. The rebels' rampage allows the government to continue its propaganda campaign. The campaign's goal is to obtain more international financing and support. They try to blame the Ruth soldiers for the rampage, painting them as barbarians responsible for all of the suffering of the Sierra Leone people. The campaign also praises the military victories of the combined Ekomag and Kamajura forces. The goal is to justify the escalation of military action. For the international community, it is the last chance to eradicate the rebels. In the field, the reality is quite different.
More than 180 interviews state that summary executions were carried out by the ECOMOG forces against the rebels and their supposed collaborators, including women and children. Children suspected of being a part of the rebellion are tortured while they are in prison. People are executed at ECOMOG or Kamajor checkpoints for carrying a weapon or because of a simple denunciation. Others are executed in their hospital beds. Some civilians testified that while they were being used as human shields by the rebels, the Ekamog forces fired on them or bombed them by plane. I saw a vehicle, a vehicle with some army, ECOMOG soldiers. Uh, they came down with uh, some men, tied their hand at the back of their, their, tied their arm, shoot them, shoot one, throw him into the water, took another one, shoot him, throw him into the water. I was seeing when they were killing people, when they were taking people there to hold the bridge, handle of the bridge and they shoot, when they shoot, the person get died, uh, and they threw him into the water. I was at my house seeing, at my house seeing, at the veranda of my house. I was seeing everything that was going on. I've even my friends, my closer friend, that were going to school, by the name of Zuki. He was killed down the bridge. Well, he was caught at the market, at the Abadin Road market. He was caught there uh, buying some food Late in the evening, he was caught by some Ekomok soldiers and he was killed down the bridge. <laughs> Must not forget that Ekomog didn't just come by themselves. Now Ekomog was given a mandate first of all by the OAU 
in this original resolution that uh, was adopted in 1997. And then that mandate was reinforced by the Security Council under Chapter 8 of the Charter of the United Nations. In other words, Oikomog has been operating in Sierra Leone as an agent of the United Nations in its responsibility to ensure world peace and security. Britain all along has fully supported the, the efforts made by ECOWAS and ECOMOG to help restore peace and help restore the legitimate government and now ensure that there is long-lasting peace and development. Um, we are particularly supportive of the role that Nigeria has played. Um, they have borne this burden um, for a long time now. I'm pleased to say that Britain has been sort of supporting them and indeed only in sort of recent months we have been sort of flying in supplies, um, logistical equipment, logistical support for ECOMOG and in particular for Nigeria. Um, I w we would like to see the burden that Nigeria is bearing sort of more widely shared both within the ECOWAS countries and more support coming from the rest of the international community for them. The international community and President Kaba's government come under fire from the media, which publicizes the amputations and the atrocities committed by the forces loyal to the government. Fearing that the situation will worsen and the truth of the crisis will be revealed, Kaba's government is forced to sign a peace treaty and enforce it. In the meantime, the new UN Security Council's resolution praises the contributions of the ECOMOG forces in establishing peace and stability. They took upon themselves, they came here, they killed our people at Trangdon, in the community, became silent, they, mute, they were mute over it. And we are becoming disgruntled. You know, the same, the same thing they did in Rwanda, the genocide. They were mute about it. ECOMOG is the sole means of protection from, for ordinary people from rebel atrocities and presents the only hope in the short term of bringing peace and security to Sierra Leone. The courage, determination and sacrifice of the ECOMOG soldiers from Nigeria, Ghana, Guinea and Mali deserve our praise and gratitude. ECOMOG's deployment in Sierra Leone has represented a milestone in the development of regional peacekeeping which the Council has rightly commended. This improvement has been heavily dependent on international support for ECOMOG. The resolution before us, enshrining the judgments of the Secretary General's fifth report on UNOMSIL, urges the need for continued international financial and logistics support for ECOMOG. A large part of the new UK assistance package of £10 million announced by Foreign Secretary Robin Cook on the 2nd of March will again go to ECOMOG. ECOMOG needs our support. The United States has contributed $9 million to provide logistical support to ECOMOG and we are seeking to do more. The United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Canada and other member states have also contributed to help ECOMOG. I cannot talk, you know, for the UN because they have their own agenda which might be hidden, you know, to themselves, you know. So if they are against actually the roof of sharing power, you know, uh, with the government, it means that uh, they are escalating the war and prolonging the war. How many things we can give you? How many? No, I don't know. You don't know. Next, please. Major, major, major. Major, please. 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 Don't call my name here. Don't call my name. I'll fire you. 
I'm captain. I'm captain. Come that side. I'm commander side. Alright, just a side captured. Oh, I talk. Okay. 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 February 1999, the Ecomog forces are reinforced by troops from Mali. The rebels are violently expelled from Freetown. The confrontations leave 6,000 dead and a devastated city. <laughs> Cluster bomb that, 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 that weighed 250 kilograms, 50 meter high, made in Sweden. Four, four is dropped in a small village with a diameter of 300 meters. Do you know the destructive I mean, capacity of that? You know that cluster bomb had primary and secondary explosion. You look at the village, the diameter is not even 300 meters. You see, you see any moving object, even goat. All that, those areas are rebel areas, so you just drop cross bomb indiscriminately. Whether the man is uh, um, uh, RUF, Air Force, SLA, you don't want to know. You main whole of them, they are behind the line, you see them. They are behind the line. Thousands of them are dead. You know? You cross that bomb within, 15, within a fraction of a second, kill 200 people in Kenima area. Or fighting them, ten thirty in the morning. Yes. A meat fighter, brand new meat fighter, founded by Britain. We know it. Give me logistic. Ten thirty in the morning. Keep people in a village of Kogelio, which is not even two hundred meters. Two hundred, two more than two hundred people because of cross firing among ourselves and the Ekomo. They were moving to Kenima. The Afra jet appear on the spot. Turn around, you don't want to know. Just a group, a, a release to cluster bomb right there. What, what I just see one of that? Tell me something. What I just see, I mean, one of flying and, 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 and devastating people's houses. Dropping bomb houses. Demolishing whole villages. The situation is tragic. It is tragic because there is a whole population who is, in quelque sorte, prisoner of this situation. Et tout est détruit, c'est inimaginable. La ville de Cheguema est une ghost town, les villages sont détruits. La population se divisera en deux catégories, ceux qui sont près des fighters ou liés quelque part à les fighters, qui sont à peu près nourris pour les raisons que l'on sait, c'est-à-dire que quand il y a des distributions qui sont faites de l'autre côté de la frontière au Loma, on va faire les commissions. Mais le reste de la population vit dans des, complètement dans des conditions épouvantables, en plein bouche. Ils sont obligés de manger cru pour ne pas faire du feu, pour ne pas se faire repérer. Je considère qu'ils sont entre 30 et 50 000 peut-être, totalement mal nourris, sans aucun soin. C'est tragique. Toutes les femmes au-dessus de 12 ans sont soit enceintes, soit déjà mères. Elles sont maigres, n'ont pas de lait, les gamins ne tiennent pas leur tête sur leurs épaules. Ils seront morts dans trois semaines, ce que j'ai déjà vu. C'est une situation épouvantable. For 10 years, the various protagonists of this conflict have deliberately ignored the fate of civilian populations. They have transformed Sierra Leone into a wounded country divided in half. The few humanitarian organizations that remained on the ground were confined to zones controlled by the government and never had access to half the population. The Civil War killed more than 70,000 and displaced more than two million people. Of these, 
400,000 took shelter in refugee camps outside the country. I cannot actually definitely deny that the roof never committed atrocities. But to an extent, actually, you know, the, the whole world, they have designed it for the whole world. That is unacceptable and that is what actually, you know, I am opposed to. Unless you hold weapon against a ROUF. In this particular issue in this county, all Sierra Leonean have committed their own crime, one way or the other. Because after the intervention, the civilians are capturing soldiers, burnt them alive, burnt them alive, killing them. SLAs, I will say this even to Maxwell Kobe. The Sierra Leone army started these things to us. It is not a matter of fire, exchange firing or battle, you can see it's an astray bullet. They did it. They will tell you, we are the people who went to the bushes and who have come. Even you travel on the way, the Kamajos, they, they start to go and make checkpoints, checkpoints, checkpoints. When two, three soldiers in, 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 on board a vehicle, they will just put that soldier down and cut his throat. And then when you make a, when you made a report, no action will take place within that time. Who do this to me? It was to Arya. I'm suffering now. We are innocent people. We are in our villages doing our domestic works, doing our plantation works. We don't know about government. We are not politicians. You see? We don't know what is government. In order to promote the anti-roof propaganda, the government built a camp close to the international hotels and gathered amputees there. Journalists from all over the world were invited to film and photograph these helpless victims. The amputees were made to believe that international aid was their last chance. Numerous international personalities bought into the game, thereby transforming a five-year-old girl into a media star but the government was caught in its own trap. The cleverly orchestrated campaign turned up on the front page of newspapers and TV screens worldwide. The efforts to make the rebels look like barbarians succeeded in prompting public opinion to demand answers from a country which they never knew existed. Today I'm here in the camp. My children are in the town because I, I live in Freetown. But has the government said they want to collect us all together? That's why I came to the camp. Is it they a even better me to bring my uh, organization that the government has been organized? So what do you want to do? We're not satisfied because I'm ready to die now. My first hand, this hand has already gone to, to, the, to the ground. So if me follow, it's no problem. It will be a second barrier. So we depend everything to... Uh, you, the brothers, coming to see us. You, our families, coming to hear our voice. Coming to snap us. We depend everything to you now. Because you just see somebody's hand, hand is cut, it's amputated. Somebody from SBK can tell you, yes, it's RUF. You buy the idea, it's RUF, because maybe the person that can't tell you, they give you money to go, I mean, I mean to go book us, I mean, what media. This is a problem. That, I mean, and that's what Mary Robinson did. He went, he wrote nonsense. I, I heard it, I mean, over the CNN interview, gruesome atrocity, or blunder atrocity, RUF. He, she cannot even appreciate the situation. Just one assessment. You know, she never even met any RUF hierarchy. She never even went behind the line to see people that amputated. People, their food are caught. You, you see it. From cluster bomb, Nigeria misguided cluster bomb. You know? Or are they, are they closing their eyes, blind eyes to it, and just concentrate on RUF, FRC? 
So you mean that Kofi Annan, all of them, they have a program. This is a child. She is going to grow up without her right hand. This is the product of war. So I hope we shall all learn from this and try to embrace peace wherever we are. Thank you very much. What's her name? Unfortunately, it's been the, the tragedy of the, the attacks and the amputations, um, notably uh, upon children, that has finally brought uh, Sierra Leone into the limelight of the international community. This campaign has made a pressure on the politics, vu que there are images, there is a reality inacceptable for our society that is montrée. So, the politics ne peuvent pas se permettre qu'elle continue. Donc, euh, les, les États, entre autres, les, les États qui sont membres du Conseil de sécurité, euh, sont un peu dans l'obligation, se retrouvent dans l'obligation vis-à-vis de leur opinion publique à intervenir. Alors, là, ils le gèrent, ils, ils interviennent quand même fonction de leurs intérêts propres. The reason is that, one, um, because of the type of destruction and the violence against the ordinary defenseless civilian population, the government basically had no choice. Um, the international community uh, had seen some of the horrors. Uh, having stood by for eight years and done nothing, um, eventually the, the images of the horrors, the amputations and so on, got to their attention, and there was a lot of pressure on government to do something. It's like we were told you had to stop this fighting no matter what it takes. July 1999, President Kibar goes to Lomé in Togo to sign the peace treaty with Fude Sanko, who was recently released and pardoned. This treaty includes the sharing of power with the roof, as it had been proposed in the past by Mada Biu and Johnny Paul Karoma. Kaba's government will include four ministers from the roof. One of the first decisions imposed by them is the cancellation of mining licenses held by foreign companies. In October 1999, the UN Security Council decided to send 10,000 peacekeepers. This new peacekeeping force will be composed mainly of Nigerians. In the following months, the difficulty created by the government and this new force will make the implementation of the peace treaty very difficult. The rebels are not ready to disarm as the UK starts training a new army in violation of the peace treaty. If uh, the Lome had not been signed, that would have gone on and on and on. So there was enormous pressure on President Kaba to sign a peace agreement, but it wasn't pressure from the international community. Um, in the sense of, you know, us dictating, but all these other pressures as well um, were, were there. Um, I don't think we, you know, we, have, we would have to admit that the level of support that's coming into Sierra Leone from the, the major supporters um, cannot be sustained indefinitely. Um, and President Kaba is certainly aware of that. But I mean, there are a great many factors. It's not just a question of uh, the international community putting pressure on him. And I think the best way to, but I can I can compare here, is that you know we've been forced into exactly the same corner in, in Ireland ourselves, 
we cannot win that war, do we allow the slaughter and the bombings to go on, or do we sit round a table and, f and find a, a compromise that we may not all like, but that will bring the suffering once and for all to an end? Uh, the options facing President Cameron were, Cameron were very similar. I also blame the international community because it is their own duty to even come they, they themselves to the town, talk to Johnny Paul Kuruma, talk to the others, go to Guinea, talk to Pakaba, bring them together as they have done right now, you see, so that all this destruction should not have happened, you see. All this destruction should not have happened if they have been, if they have done what they just did, if, if this is what they have done for a long time. Il y a des pays dans le monde, et la Sierra, la Sierra Leone en fait partie, qui sont de véritables zones grises, de véritables no man's land en matière de droit international. Des pays où l'on peut massacrer, des pays où l'on peut affamer, où en plus les responsabilités sont floues, sont troubles. Alors on désigne un bouc émissaire qui est le RUF, et puis après on fait une amnistie, donc les gens ne comprennent plus. Ils se disent mais pourquoi alors cette amnistie En fait pourquoi une amnistie Parce que tout le monde a trempé dans les salles combines. The Sierra Leonean conflict is not specific to West Africa. Many past presidents of this continent have paid dearly for their belief in a decolonized Africa, free of its own development. The Pan-Africanist movement of Krumah and Nyerere wanted a new form of liberation for Africa, explaining that colonialism doesn't stop with independence. For Africa, Colonialism was only the first step towards a new world order, an economic order that does not take into consideration the well-being of the civilian populations. This order is imposed thanks to military interventions by foreign powers. This system led to the genocides in Rwanda and Iraq and the fatal mistakes in Somalia and Angola. During his time, Henry Kissinger taught us that international laws are enforced only when they serve the interests of international powers. I know that the people of Sierra Leone have gone through a painful experience. Who, will, who can forget the brutal amputation of limbs that went on here and all the atrocities that took place? But I hope following the signing of yesterday, this will be the thing of the past. And now we all have to come together to implement the peace agreement that was negotiated. I have had the chance to discuss the peace agreement, the implementation, the support of the international community so that the people of this country can look forward to a life of peace, prosperity, which could be theirs given the resources and the riches that are available here. Uh, I can promise you that the United Nations will work hand in glove with the government and the people of Sierra Leone to bring peace about. Thank you. Kunde anga unja u masira ngafe. Mmm, ye muna ba ye manya masa. Ye kunde anga unja u masira ngafe. Mmm, ma muna ba ye manya masa. Kubamba Mm, I 
Yamon, that man in Yama, said Angam. Yang, I guess I know Yava in Duma. I have paper by my Yama. Yamon, Nanga, and Yahoo, my Yanduma. Yang, we must say, I have a new own Duma. Condi Anga, Yahoo, said Angam. Yamon, Nanga, I'm going to bring you, said Angam. I have part, Condi Anga, Yahoo, said Angam. I am on Nama, Yama, only one wonder. Condi Angi and Yahoma. Condi Anga and Yahoma, said Angafe. Yam on Nava in my master. Condi Angi and Yahoma, said Angafe. I'm on Nava in my master. Go Bamba Angi and Yahoma, said Angafe. Yam on Nava in my master, Angafe. Paper Panga, I call you, got it, Angafe. Ye <laughs> I have parked on the younger and Yahoo, Master Langham. I am on Nama and Yama, only one wonder. Condi Angi and Yahoo, Master. Condi Angi and Yahoo, Master Langham. Condi Angi and Yahoo, Master Langham. Condi Angi and Yahoo, Master